Welcome to Live at the Library, What's Going On. This year we're celebrating 40 years of the Music Library in Cork and we have a series of interviews with contemporary uh, Cork musicians from all genres. Our next interview is with Mick Flannery, the double platinum selling artist. Trying to get myself together Pick me up, you put me back on track my bed is made in the gutter, but I won't lie down. My bed is made in the gutter, but I won't lie down. Oh, I can't stay here forever. Gotta get myself together. Take my hand and turn my look around. I'm a man with a hurricane hot on my heels. I say anywhere, anywhere away from here. There's a weight in me and it won't let me go. I wanna shine, shine. Hi Mick. Hello. It's good to see you. Um, welcome to the Rory Galler Music Library. Thank you. How have you been keeping? Good. Um, you've been doing a lot of touring, I think, since December. Is Can you tell me a bit about it? Have you been going non-stop since December? Not non-stop, but <laughs> I was busy enough. I was in North America for a while, and Canada. And I hadn't been there before, really. So it was nice. And uh, <laughs> you're giggling. <laughs> and Austria and Europe, weren't you in Austria now? Um, I've, I, was I? I might have been. Holland? I, I was in Holland recently. Yeah. And Germany. Yeah. I've been going to Holland and Germany for the last three years or so, kind of once or twice a year, trying to, you know, build up your name. Yeah, convert people to. Yeah. And uh, how do you find it on the road? Are you kind of, do you feel lonely when you're on the road? Uh, no, not really. Um, maybe, uh, maybe that will happen. But uh, at the moment, it's still kind of new places and nothing is boring to me. Or Where's been the most interesting place for you to play? Uh, I don't really know. I wouldn't know how to to grade them. Yeah. Uh, I like going to new places. So, I, I mean, any new places is kind of got value because of its newness, I guess. Um, I'm not sure. I guess America, because of the music I liked and got influenced by, I kind of feel as though it goes over best there because I'm so American-based in my influences. Really? You think you get... You, well, people respond to you better there, do you think? Sometimes, yeah. Because maybe they're more... It's their it's their base is that type of music. So, mm. and is this a quota that you have to get in as many gigs abroad? Like EMI want you to do that, or is it something you come up with yourself, plan it yourself, or how do you uh, go about it? EMI are gone. Oh, right. EMI were gone or were sold to Universal. Universal, yeah. Sorry. Um, they were. They wouldn't. I remember e though EMI. Com Complaining about a band that didn't tour, because it was the the band weren't pushing their material, so the record company were annoyed. They felt the band just wanted to sit back and let the money roll in somehow. Um, but no, nowadays though it uh, so I, I don't get any pressure mm -hmm. because, but it seems a little bit cynical because uh, other people do get pressure. Uh, people nowadays get uh, nearly kind of forced in. If they want to have a record deal nowadays, they need to do a, something called a 360 deal, yeah. uh, which means the record company gets a cut of everything they do, including live gigs and including anything they might sell after the gig, like a T-shirt or something like that. So the whole, the whole, package, the whole package is the product. Percentage, wow. Yeah. So then they would be pushing the tour because they have a vested interest in the tour doing well and all that. So I don't know. Yeah. But that's always been, you know. Yeah. <laughs> people have no interest in something unless they're getting There's something from it. There's profit there, like, yeah. Um, 
I'm just going to say a few quick nice things about you, right? Don't. Just to get them out of the way, because I know you don't like it. No, you don't like no, compliments, no. but I'll if I, yeah, I, I'm going to go anyway. Um, you are an award-winning, platinum, <laughs> double platinum-selling artist who's had um, your debut album, Evening Train, was uh, produced as a play by a UK company, and you won the International Songwriter. That's company. not even true. Uh, okay, fix everything for me. So <laughs> <laughs> what is the truth then? It uh, hasn't happened yet. But it's in the process, isn't it? Well, you talk about it that you... Bumps in the road, all right. All right. Well, that's normal anyway. Like, But it's still, they're interested in producing <laughs> a play about, look how difficult he is. <laughs> and um, also, uh, there was a, a director from the UK called Ian Henry, who was so impressed with your music, he decided to follow you around the country to do a documentary on you. Is there yeah, a truth yeah. there? Yeah. I've met him, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I could go on, but I know you're getting uncomfortable, so... Basically, what I'm asking you is, with all these successes and these achievements, do you feel that you have, do you feel and do you think that you're a success at this stage? Uh, I don't know. It's th that's, that's a very philosophical question. Um, it depends what success means to you. Exactly. It's relative. But are you happy that you... That's, you more, must feel that's the better of a grade of success, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's all that I care about, really. That, you know, that, that's why I'm asking you, like, are you happy yeah. like, in your success? <laughs> yeah. I'm happy, yeah. But, I wouldn't, but, it's, but it, to marry my happiness too tightly to my career in music would be detrimental to my happiness, I think. Why? Because it's still growing? Well, because it's not always going to grow. And that's, that's just a given. Mm, I'd say it'll keep going. I think you are. I, I, think I, you I mean, I'm going to die. Yeah, there's that, of so course. <laughs> but I was going to say that you will go down in history as one of Ireland's best ever songwriters. I really believe that. And I think that you're kind of like the perfect mix between Leonard Cohen and Tom Waits. And not that you're like them. You have your own thing going on. But you're that good as the world iconic artists like. <laughs> I'm that's, done. That's I'm done now. Nice. Now I can start very insulting nice you. <laughs> It's true. But it's yes. a different, that's a different question to asking. I, I know, I'm just trying yeah. to get them all if out. I, if my, like, if my locus of happiness was, okay, I want to be remembered as an iconic mm. singer. You know what I mean, though? Yeah, I agree. There's no yeah. way to achieve it. There's no way, like, I'll be dead by the time well, any of that may or may not come true. You know? Yeah. But... You're doing your art, you're doing what pa you're passionate about, so you're happy anyway, basically. That's the, at the end of all that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really, I c I'm lucky to have a passion that I kind of get excited about and mm. I can spend time at. But I mean, it's, all, it's, got, it's got a flip side to it. Like, I have in a kind of a bad fear in my life when, you know, if I go through a time where I haven't written any song or I've written songs that I think aren't good, mm. it's, it tends to get me down. Which isn't wise, like. No, I was going to ask you this actually. I hope you don't mind that. Um, before, maybe not so much now. I would have thought that you have a slight fear of fame. Is that accurate? Do you think? Uh, like a lot yeah. of artists are afraid they won't make it, but I actually think you're different that way. Like. Well, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't speak for everybody. I don't think everybody is interested. Is too interested in fame. Some people are, but then again, you'd have to worry for those type of people. Not that they're a type, but you'd have to worry for someone who's only interested After in that, fame. Yeah. Um, but the showbiz industry like, is a bit of a dilemma in the sense for somebody who, you need to sell yourself, but you're just not that kind of person. So how did you work that as you've come along through the years? Uh, just You kind of get used to things, is, 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 is all I can really think of it. You get used to not thinking about things and not placing importance in things. I, I, can, I can't imagine you, though, even at the early stages when you had Evening Train, uh, you launched that album. Like, I can't rem imagine you promoting your gigs and getting people to come in to see you. Or Did you do that or did you get somebody else to do it for you? Mm, I didn't really do it very, no. But you just hit the ground running lucky. kind of thing, yeah. <coughs> I do it nowadays with social media and I put up the posts about gigs and stuff like that which is yeah. kind of like bothering people you know 
But I wouldn't, kind of, I don't know. I never used to tell like friends or relatives that gigs were on because I never wanted to make them feel obliged to come along, you know? Because mm. it just might not be their cup of tea and knowing me shouldn't be a reason to to do something you don't want to do. Yeah. Um, <coughs> are you proud of what you produce in your music though? Do you feel proud of the songs that you've produced, the albums you've produced? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really listen to them too much, but I like, I like them. Mm. Some of them I don't like, but you know. Did you say um, when you write a new song, it's like having a new friend? Did you say that? I hope you said I that. I might now. have. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of, uh, it's, it's more of a friend before it's written. So it's like a puzzle in your head that you mess around with all the time when you try to make it work, I guess. So that's like something to occupy your mind, I guess. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe a friend is a bad analogy. For okay. It. But um, are you more demanding of yourself now that you have a lot of experience in your songwriting? No, because like songwriting is weird. I don't know, because you get into a rut. Like I've written the same song theoretically for 50 times. There are a lot of the themes are the same. Um, Except for maybe I own you. You're venting a bit and I own you, aren't you? Yeah, that's one out of 50. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <coughs> do I put pressure on myself? Like, are you more demanding to write? Like, uh, are you, again, like, are you under pressure to achieve in the next level and bring it to the next level? And as you said a while ago, but when time goes by and you haven't written a song, maybe, or you haven't produced an album, you get worried about that. But even in the songwriting itself, are you trying to be. Are you trying to get a message across? Do you want to make statements? Or have you any conscious awareness of that change or not? Um, I don't know if I'm trying to get any message across. I think the, when, it's, when music and lyrics are working well, it's an empathetic buzz for whoever's listening to it. That's when it's doing a job. Um, If I put any more pressure on myself, I think sometimes the experience is something you'd like to forget in order to be more original. Like the things I know about the guitar and the piano have kind of sent me down a, <coughs> I don't know, like a narrow path of when I pick up the guitar, I might be tending to go to the same chords. Mm every time so you need I think you need kind of stimulation to change what you're going to do like yeah, I get so that. play different instruments maybe or try and forget what you've learned really because um, you forget that like a song is like it doesn't have to do anything to have to do with a guitar or a piano or much at all really you don't have to use language even you can the it's air is your yeah. palate and you can do whatever you want so <coughs> the more you forget about what you've learned the better because it's all it is is fresh air or maybe not fresh air but just air yeah waiting you know for you to make something with it so the boundaries aren't very tight i mean the, <coughs> the more boundaries you put on yourself the less original you're going to be and when you were a young fella, did you eat a dictionary because you are a master of words? Did you study your words and all that? Look at the face, look at the look he's giving me. <laughs> a master of words? I, I don't know if I'm a master of words. You really are because of how you create this kind of rhythm and you create a story um, and the words are just like, you've only got so much space, what you were saying about air, but there's only so much time in the song that you deliver the story. And you do very, very well. You do, like, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, look, no more compliments anyway, go on. You see, you didn't ask me a question. <laughs> um, you li yeah. Do you love words? Or do you even think like, of words like that? Like, do you I get mean, pleasure out of using certain words or anything? <laughs> <laughs> That's a dangerous question. <coughs> Um, 
Yeah, I do. Like, I mean, that's like my tastes are towards writers like Bob Dylan and uh, Leonard Cohen, who use words very well. And I, I, I find it hard to listen to songs which don't use words well. There are songs that I hear and the melody is really good and it's, I feel as though I could have been put to better use. You know, the melody is very emotive, but the words are pants. So it's just a waste. Like, do you know that song? Uh, what's the song where the closest thing to Michelle Pfeiffer you've ever seen? Do you know that song? I do wouldn't. Is that? No, I don't think. It's <laughs> like. That's another Michelle Pfeiffer reference, but it's a different one, I think. <laughs> the, the line is the closest thing to Michelle Pfeiffer that you've ever seen. Which doesn't do much really for the human condition, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Plus, Michelle Pfeiffer is still alive, and she yeah. looks very much like Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. That's the closest thing to Michelle Pfeiffer <laughs> you could get. <laughs> but I, I it's just dumb. I, I played Scrabble. I I challenged Mick to a game of Scrabble for fifty euros f about five years ago. Guess who who won? <laughs> Mick, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how? Why is it that a lot of musicians find it hard to write an upbeat song? Do you think? Um, well, upbeat songs—you uh, have to marry the the subject matter into the. Well, uh, into well, most times you try to marry the subject matter to the melody. You don't always have to, but. So it's hard to think of something that you're either, so, so like a, a fast song where the l lyrics are coming quick and fast would have to be something that you're excited about. So you're either angry about it maybe, or you're excited about it, or it's happy. And, um, so there are not enough people excited or happy about things when they're writing their songs. Well, for me, when I'm happy, I don't think about writing songs. Like, I kind of use it as a kind of an exorcism for whatever's gone wrong. But, uh, I don't know. So are you writing mostly what's going on in your circle? You're writing about that, your own life. I mean, when I read and when I listen to some of the songs, I'm pretty sure it's not actually you you're writing about, but it could be it's your life is touching on certain issues, obviously. So is it, it's like a not autobiographical, really, is it? So it's bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. Yeah. I steal, steal things here and there. <laughs> but I kind of smuggle in my own stuff on top of it then. Especially if I don't want it to be known that this is about me. Yeah. Particularly. Disguise it a little. Yeah. And in, um, um, sorry, your cameo song, is that you? Is that you? Yeah, I imagine killing children all the time. I know, lying in bed late, awake, uh, awake at night, thinking about, you know, life is... Yeah, well, I've, I mean, I was just being jokey there, but... Yeah. <coughs> uh, like, well, I do lie awake sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not as unhappy as the character in that song. That, that song is kind of... Uh, is, to, I don't know, to do with mental health, I guess. Mm. Um someone feeling a bit isolated or detached from the world which can is getting seemingly easier and easier with more technology people are getting kind of atomized away from each other and they've got an addiction that's not even something that they have to hide by comparison to alcoholism or drugs or something you know they're beyond the social media and their little digital units and they don't stop like well, it's never clear exactly what they're doing mm. on the phone. They could be doing something worthwhile. Mm. Yeah. Um, or they could be looking up stuff, pictures of anything. Um, I like that uh, going to your gigs. I think you've got this great banter with the audience now. And um, I think you said something about that you had to learn how to communicate. Is that fair enough? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, well, it's a, it's a strange kind of interaction when you have a microphone and you're facing one direction and the, the rest of the room is facing the other. It's very unnatural. Yeah. And it creates an odd environment. Like the things that you say are amp amplified in their humor, but they might not be that funny. But mm -hmm. it's because the, there's tension in the room that the audience is kind of very charitable to you. They, they, they laugh and make you feel better because they know what you're trying to do. You're trying to ease the tension. But you are actually that funny, right? I don't care what you say because I've been to the gigs. He is hey, that I'll funny, isn't he? <laughs> 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 and it's brilliant. But I was wondering, because you've learned, you've definitely learned new skills there. And I was thinking, would you like to be, you're going to kill me now, but would you like to be a radio a DJ or a TV host or something like that? No. No? <coughs> No. Are the ra well, radio DJs, like, it's a very scary one because they seem to be, like, constantly happy. All right. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. <laughs> mm. Or the, that's, that's what the radio seems to force them into, like, some type of compelled excitement and everything is hunky-dory. Do you not feel that now when you listen to the radio? Well, I think I don't listen to much radio. I mean, I'd listen to a few specific programs, but generally not daytime Maybe it's radio. Just daytime radio. Yeah, I don't yeah. like daytime radio at all. But some there are some brilliant uh, programs, like Nile Toner and people like that do some good shows. You know, there John, John Creedon and so on. Yeah, there are. Yeah. But I just thought that you're um, more able to engage with the public in a way that I thought now that maybe you'd consider something down the road. I mean, are you going to be touring when you're 50 odd? Do you think? I don't know. Yeah. Do you see? Do you think in um, long term, and you want to plan for it, or we just taking days as they come? Uh, day to day, yeah. Uh, maybe a bit too too much day to day. Yeah. I don't have a good ethic for planning into the future. It's probably important. That's okay sometimes. too. And um, when are you most creative? Would you say? Like, have you? got a time that you can say I'm gone now I'm going to be like something. for a day or two when do no. you write when is it easiest for you to write what kind of settings do you have to have mm. or have you figured that out or? Uh, new places are good apparently like I've heard people say that if you if you're in a new place where you haven't been before and your your body is aware of it your subconscious is aware of it and it makes it makes you a little bit anxious, especially when you try to sleep. You're much more likely to have bad dreams when you're sleeping in a strange place, because your your body wants you to be more alert and ready to wake up just in case of danger. Yeah. So in that your in those situations, your subconscious seems to throw up new things to wake you or to keep you alert. So. Um, that traveling helps or being in new places helps being home over helps <laughs> because you don't really know yourself there's an odd kind of consciousness that happens when you're you kind of let go you're sick as well yeah um, not so much when you're drunk a little bit when you're tipsy or drunk mm -hmm. you can have odd occurrences I don't some people say that uh, weed is good, but I, don't, I haven't experienced that. Mm -hmm. And um, have you, speaking about an album now, or being creative, would you have an album? Is it too early to ask you, have, are you working on another album? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, all, I'm always trying to write songs. I don't know if I have enough. I have kind of a half a concept idea written about this failed oh. musician. Yay. But I, I don't know if it's going to work. I yeah. don't know if I have enough to make an album of it, or if I even want to. Is it too specific? I'd love that. I think I'd look forward to that. But um, what is your favourite album of all time that you keep going back to, that you absolutely love, that blew you away and had an impact on your life? Uh, but so a couple of Bob Dylan ones, Bring You All Back Home and Street Legal, I like. But it seems to be... I think it's kind of married to what age I was as well at the time, you know. I was more open to being affected. Um, those albums, I listened to Nirvana Unplugged 
It must have been a thousand times easy. <laughs> but it's again, it was like when I was, what's that word? In, in, when you can be influenced easily. You know, in susceptible. susceptible yeah. to it, yeah. Um, so, you know, when you're around that age, you're mm. susceptible <laughs> to um, I'm going to ask the audience to ask you some questions, okay. if that's all right. Yeah. Um, T, would you like to ask him a question? But in some of your albums, for example, uh, there are two in, uh, about two in I Own You, um, which is I Own You and Cameo. And in Red to Blue, there is um, Gone Forever and Red to Blue. And um, those are either kind of, you know, in Red to Blue, the two songs are upbeat and they you know, upbeat and in I On You, two songs are very, almost kind of punk rockish. And I just want to know, like, do you feel, do you have pressure to kind of make a few songs kind of different to the rest of the albums, or do you just like doing that? Like yeah, it's a bit of, bit of both pressure and I kind of like doing it as well. But I kind of, only s since playing gigs with a band, do I kind of appreciate how much more fun it is for me to play the songs and what a, a kind of a relief of a reaction you get from an audience for when you kind of play them something that's above 62 BPM. Um, there is definitely, there was more pressure in the past when I was, ha on, when I had a record label, you know, asking for radio songs. Radio, I could never really get together, but I tried to up the tempo at least. It's like the human ear seems to need a little bit of a break as well from the same thing over and over. So, yeah. But you're right, it's about two per album I can manage. <laughs> <coughs> but I've been following you since the first EP, let's say, right? But what yeah. keeps me coming back to you is the strength of your melodies. So, Kind of curious. Can you can you advance a song with, without having a melody first? Yeah. Uh, if I have a strong enough idea what I want to say. Um, uh, I might play you as an example there when when I'm playing some songs. Um, but it, I tend to mess around with melody first and find something I like and then attach. Uh, subject to it. But would it be that you were saying that uh, you know a hand automatically goes from C to G and you compromise your melody straight away? That you'd have a melody first before you'd even grab right. the guitar? Like so, so therefore, yeah, sometimes. hitting the C or G w doesn't matter because you can write any, anything in three chords, let's say, if you've got your own melody first. That happens sometimes. Uh, and it happens under the what Sheena was asking about under the when when are the best times to write it's when you're when you're kind of weirded out in some way um yeah so then I'd I kind of record what I think the melody is into the phone and I wouldn't know what chords would be attached to it until la until later was it always going to be music do you reckon you'd be brilliant at something else you know if the music wasn't there is there something else that you really love to do well, like woodwork, yeah. Oh, I yeah. was into woodwork. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if I would have been very good at it. You would have been. Yeah, I witnessed it. Like <laughs> we witnessed it. You were very good. I was interested in it. Um, I don't know. I remember when I was 12 or so, I, you know, in, in school they'd say, well, what, you guys are going to have to start thinking about what you want to be. Yeah. And I was like, fuck off. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. So then I thought I was weird. And um, <coughs> I thought I'd been end up a bum. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you'd be happy with doing work work anyway. Like you didn't have the music, so. Yeah, or like recently, things. yeah, kind of making things. Recent when yeah. I started working with st as stonemason, I thought yeah. I could I could <coughs> handle this. Yeah, you know.
Um, is collaborating with others musically something you welcome, or is it you find it difficult if you don't have total control over? I find it difficult, all right. Yeah. But I've done it much more recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's grand. It's strange. Yeah. And the, what, hap what the product is never fully yours. It's always mm -hmm. some type of uh, mixing of colors between the people's minds, you know. You know, you ask about upbeat songs or happy songs. I was in America there and I met these two guys and we were to write a song together. And they were very different to me. One of them was especially um, just happy. I guess, you know, outwardly outgoing and uh, an upbeat fella. You know, he was positive. Like yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, oh, God. <laughs> so we ended up writing this pop song. And, I, and I'm, a f I'm scared shitless of it because it's got my voice on it singing kind of happy lyrics. And I don't know what to, I don't know what to do. And it freaks you out, like? Uh, people I've played it to like it. Yeah. I think it's, oh, it's, it's good, like. But I, I'm, I'm f terrified by it, which is stupid, like. Because I think my, the, my fear there is um, that people will think, oh, he's sold out now, he's just trying to be popular. He's trying to get some money. Is that very important to you to make sure that people don't ever think that you've that things go to your head or anything like that? Are you worried about that? That people will think you're. I think it's hard not to think about that. Yeah. Uh, but you you never will have to. You you're grand. Like you've never changed. That's brilliant. That's what I love about you. When I mentioned all your achievements earlier on, you're still the same guy. Like, and they could have gone to your head easily. Yeah, but I wonder, would you say that if I released an album of pop songs with happy songs on them that I made you think, oh my God, what's... This is weird, what's up with him? But I wouldn't think you've lost the run of yourself. Yeah, you sure? Yeah, pretty certain, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would think you're experimenting or whatever, you know, or just yeah, yeah. looking, as you said a while ago, sometimes just forget everything you know and start fresh and do something different, you know? Yeah. And sometimes I think what you're uncomfortable with most is the thing <coughs> that you should atta attack as well. Maybe, maybe. I think people are just designed to 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 want to stay, w you know, in the good books with their with their kin, mm -hmm. you know, with their family and with their close friends. Yeah. And they're afraid of appearing kind of alien, no matter what the reasons are. You know, like what if it's they think you're trying to be famous or they think you're too hungry for money whatever reason they might have not to trust you, you know? Um, well, you mentioned Dylan and Cohen as your influences, and um, I know Cohen, he's, for some songs, he was spending years and years writing and drafting and re-editing, and I think for Dylan it was much more flowing. Like, do, do you draft and edit and re-edit and rewrite, or do you just, does it just happen when you're... Um, I, I don't really do, like, I don't do drafts, really, does it? Um, sorry. Uh, I'd kind of have a song maybe two thirds of the way along, and I'd still be trying to fight for what the last verse might be or something. But I wouldn't kind of, I wouldn't commit it to paper, say, un until it was good, you know. Uh, and it's it's varying for me how long the song takes to write. Mm -hmm. It could be it could be years or it could be a week. Um, some melodies I've had hanging around for a couple of years, you know, and I haven't been able to to break the whatever it is, you know. And do you think uh, sometimes you describe your um, music as miserable, or you say, do you want another dose of misery? Yeah. Do you really think that, or are you just saying it to kind of take the piss out of yourself? Yeah, mostly just to break the ice. Yeah, because I I don't ever find anything you write miserable as such but I remember like listening people used to talk about Leonard Cohen as being depressing and all that but I think it's the state of mind the person is in anyway when they're receiving it isn't it really yeah I think Leonard Cohen isn't depressing no do neither do I yeah I think he's brilliant so I think you just you kind of assess the situation beyond what you know 
I guess when I say that, I kind of mean it to people because I never, you can't really assume that when people come to a gig that they've seen you before that they know what to expect. Mm. So someone that comes to a gig of mine and that has never heard me before, what they will hear is is a low tempo, kind of not very excited music, you know. Mm, so I can't get away from the idea that if you played my music in a country pub to 20 old fellas that never heard it before, they'd be going, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, you know, that's the base okay, reaction yeah. I'm waiting for, so <laughs> I'm just trying to counteract it. <laughs> is there, a, in your, can you imagine ever falling in with a band? Is there anybody you'd like to play with? Just to, uh, like... Bruce Springsteen. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Or Tom Waits or Bob Dylan. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, tell me about a bit of what's ahead for you in the next six months or a year. Have you any plans that are um, new projects or anything? I just kind of decide whether or not this concept album thing is going to work. Um, uh, I've got a tour in July for the full month of July in America. Yeah. Um, Great. Yeah, we're trying to get that play thing going with the evening train. Mm -hmm. but it's just, we've hit a couple of obstacles with it. Um, yeah. There's a couple of other things going on, but I don't know if I can actually talk about them because they're like to do with the companies that I've yeah. gotten myself involved with. <laughs> if you can kind of glean what I mean from that <laughs> without yeah. me saying... Yeah. How much editing are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, sometimes you can get yourself into situations yeah. which you don't know at the time aren't the best for you. Yeah. You know. Okay. Well, um, thanks a million, Mick. You're brilliant. And <laughs> I want to, you're going to play a few songs now? Yeah. Yeah, uh, cool. So, thanks everybody. So this is the song I was thinking of when you asked about, or maybe you had asked me only about melody, but this is one of the, where the lyrics came first and I tried to attach melody to it afterwards. This is a song about Ireland. Um, I got pissed off with Ireland because of the recent healthcare issues we have, amongst other problems. sent her walking soft into the night I have not seen her since but at night I hear her sing Rosie I try to love you but you won't love me I hear her call her mother's name in a fever dream Rosie I try to love you but you will not love me Rosaline, who was that man that sat and talked all night? His gold cross glistened in your room against his robe of white. And then this morning, walking with your younger son, hand in hand down to the woods, yet only he returned. That boy would run and smile and climb the orchard tree. Rosie, I try to love you, but you won't love me. I passed him weeping low, now his head between his knees. Rosie, I try to love you, but you will not love me. 
Rosaline, when I speak, do you hear me at all? Or did I make a god of you while I was all alone? Alone as Connolly, alone, propped up in a chair. Bullets in his chest for you and no Roisin to care. If he were here, if he could see, Rose, I tried to love you, but you won't love me. I see him take you by the hand and I hear him softly weep. Rose, I tried to love you, but you will not love me. Hit the bottle, baby. I lost some time. I did it all to get you off my mind. I give the act a clean, dry as a bone. You beat the shakes, you break, pick up the bone. Just to win back my baby's heart. And to tell her I would never die. Let it ride, yet you know that it's wrong Being the love that you know is gone I'll be the rock that you perish upon And hit the road together, you walk the line You try to make it like the good old times But soon the fire started, went out of faith I didn't want to, but you made me say, baby, I didn't change, I didn't change, I'm still here, Lord. let it ride, let it ride, and you see, come on now, what went wrong, I told all you, I didn't mean you no harm or nothing, except to set you, my baby, free. Whatever kept you from leaving me She says it isn't working She's had a feel Don't have it now Don't think we ever will I don't begrudge you nothing I wish you well I wish you everything you wish yourself, baby. I didn't change, I didn't change, I'm still here, Lord. Let it ride, let it ride, and you see. Come on now, what went wrong? I told all you. I didn't mean you no harm or nothing except to set you, my baby, free. Whatever kept you from leaving me If I 
go down to the tavern if I won't come back. If I go down to the tavern if I won't come back. Oh, I'm trying to do better. Trying to get myself together. Pick me up, you put me back on track. My bed is made in the gutter, but I won't lie down. My bed is made in the gutter, but I won't lie down. Oh, I can't stay here forever. Gotta get myself together. Take my hand, just turn my look around. I'm a man with a hurricane hot on my heels. I say anywhere, anywhere away from here. There's a weight in me and it won't let me go. Wanna shine, shine, do as I know. But I do need you. I do. Well, keep me on the straight and the narrow and the road. Cause you know that I go a little bit off track with the bottle, but you no, I think the more you think, the less you understand. And the more I try to get things right, the less they go as planned. Oh, man, oh, man. When I go down to the station, will you come with me? When I go down to the station, will you come with me? Gonna leave this stormy weather. Gonna get our things together. Morning trains gonna have us both set free. But I'm a man with a hurricane hot on my heels. I say anywhere, anywhere away from here. There's a weight in me and it won't let me go. Wanna shine, shine, good as I know. I do. Straight and the narrow and the road, cause you know that I go a little bit off track with the bottle, but you know I think the more you think, the less you understand. And the more I try to get things right, the less they go as planned. Oh, Talk about endless night, talk about Broadway shine, talk about dream chasing, talk about heart racing. Round here things go slow, everyone knows everyone. When the day's done, you feel like some just went missing. I lie in my bed at night. I think about all the lives running wild in New York City. And I see a star through the window pane light from as far as no man has been dreamed of a high life. How high? I drive into town at night just to see colors, just to see light. I park up and I buy something just to do something. I get tired and I go home. I try to take different roads, but it's been a long time since I got lost out here. And I see a star through the window. As far as no man has been dreamed of a high life, how high can you go? How high can you go? Talk about in the 
this night. Talk about prophesying. Talk about dream chasing. Talk about heart racing. A takeaway place in town. Young boys are messing around. They get what they want and they run out without paying for it. They come out, they knock an old man down. His glasses break on the ground. I get out and I walk over to help him. And I see a star through the window pane light from as far as no man has been dreamed of a high life. How high can you go? How high can you go? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.